Brilliant sunshine. And 63 degrees with the wind again howling, blowing out strong to right field, going out there at 16 miles per hour. And the first pitch of the game at 102 Eastern time, fouled out of play. Caden Wallace hitting 325, five homers, and a team leading 31 RBI. And he's had four hits in the series as well. Good slider right there from Neely. Nothing has changed. Gators need to keep the Arkansas leadoff guys off the bases. Did a good job of that yesterday. So Neely in his first start of the year, coming off a very solid relief performance last week at Georgia. Came out of the pen to throw five innings, give up one run, struck out five, didn't walk anybody, and his pitch count was at the highest of the year. He threw 72 pitches. And that gave him a start today. The home plate umpire today is the veteran, Crew Chief Tony Walsh, Eric Gaucher, the first base umpire, Scott Kennedy at second base, and Jeffrey Macias is the third base umpire. Boy, been working that slider, then came in there with another one. I don't know if that was a changeup, but worked its way into the right-hander. Might work that slider again here. Outer third. So another 2-2 two -two pitch. Right back to the mound, fielded by Neely. And one away, and that's how our game starts today. Yeah, another good slider by Neely. He's got a good tight one going. That'll bring up the Arkansas center fielder, Braden Webb. Webb hitting 274, leading the Hogs with eight home runs, 20 RBIs. He hit his eighth home run of the season in the Arkansas win here on Thursday night. And job one already done by Neely, keep the leadoff guy off the bases. Again, I always look at the first inning as a shutdown inning. Keep that momentum on your side. That ball hit to left field. Wyatt Langford coming in. will make the catch. Two up and two down. Off-speed pitch. Got Webb out in front. So nice change of speeds here by Neely early. That'll bring up second baseman Robert Moore. Hitless in the series. In six at bats. Hitting 248. Three home runs, 23 driven in. Five foot nine junior. Strikes this ball deep to right field, but it got around early on it. And a long strike. Dangerous hitter Robert Moore. 17 home runs a year ago. One of the most clutch hitters in all of college baseball a year ago. Nice tail on that pitch. Yeah, good change up right there. Let's see if he comes right back with it. Moore was a second team freshman All-American two years in a row due to COVID, 2020 and 2021. And strike three called a one three at bats last night with a 295 average. First pitch, fastball. Called strike one. Yeah, 96 miles an hour right out of the chute. Halter with five home runs, 14 RBI. But he's hitting just 200 in league play. Nine for 45 against SEC pitching. Fouled out of play, off to the left side, down on the berm. And we've seen teams shift on Colby Halter, but pretty much straight away, they do play Robert Moore deep at second base, as I call it, short right field. A lot of teams have done complete shifts on him in the past. 
Arkansas with Zach Gregory in left, Brandon Webb in center, Chris Lanzilli in right. You saw the infield alignment. Caden Wallace, Jalen Battles, Robert Moore, and Peyton Stovall. And Halter, a strikeout victim. 43rd strikeout in just over 39 innings now for Jackson Wiggins. Got him to offer it this off-speed pitch. It was a hanging pitch, and Halter goes, okay, this is a hanger, and it stayed up. And because it stayed up, he held his swing but couldn't hold it all the way. And now they've got Wiggins has some kind of wristband thing they're taking off. So one gone, and that brings up the Gator center fielder, Judd Fabian. Fabian got a hit last night, a, a double, one for seven on the weekend. Both Halter and Fabian came into the game today, six for their last 34. Last two pitches, 97 and 98 miles an hour. Fabian leading the SEC in home runs with 13, 10th in the league with his 31 RBI. The Gators have managed a split in the series so far, despite hitting just 203 this weekend. 12 hits and 59 at bats in the first two games combined. Fouled out of play again. Another 97 mile an hour fastball. And good at bat so far here by Fabian. So now a full count. And I think a guy like Wiggins, it's going to be important to get a runner on base, slow him down as quick as possible in an inning. And Fabian draws a walk. He's third in the league in getting free passes. And there's the difference between Fabian last year and this year. He's patient, fouled off some pitches, and took some borderline pitches off the plate where normally a year ago he would have offered that. That's his 28th walk in the year. So now here's the Gator right fielder, Sterling Thompson. Thompson with a 336 average, but he's been hot. He's got a hit in 11 of his last 12 games. During that time, over the 12 games, Thompson hitting 364. And how many times have we seen teams shift on Thompson only to be burned by him going the other way? We see Arkansas playing him straight up here, double play depth. I said many times the reason why a guy like Thompson will not get in a prolonged slump is his ability to go the other way and his nice swing path that he has in his swing. Fouled out of play again. Well, Thompson was 0 for 4 Thursday, and that snapped a 10-game hitting streak. And earlier in the year, he put together a 13-game hitting streak. So that speaks to the, his consistency and his ability to use all parts of the field. I mean, a guy that will go high in the draft. 0 and 2. And he got the fastball past him. Yeah, foul tipped, held on by the catcher. Nice job by Turner holding on to that, 95 miles an hour. So two strikeouts for Wiggins, and now here's Wyatt Langford. Langford leading the Gators with a 342 batting average. Homering for the 11th time last night. 
Now, despite home run opposite way with two outs, Arkansas is playing the shift for him to pull with Robert Moore on the left side of second base. First base side completely open, holding the runner on. Of Langford's 11 home runs, six have come against the SEC pitching. And I'm always befuddled when you play a guy to pull and you shift everybody over, but you pitch him away. Yeah. Well. There we go. See Robert Moore all the way over in the last pitch, outer third. And these guys will miss from time to time. And that's why we always have to get on the umpires. <laughs> They're not major league pitchers, and if you're going to squeeze them, you're not doing anybody any favors. That's a great point, Nick. They're playing the shift, and he's missing the plate outside. Right. And the umpire, umpire's got to know that and they're not going to hit a pie pan for a strike zone. Three and one. I've read today they're talking about the possibility down the road of replay challenges on balls and strikes. Could you imagine? Yeah. That'd oh, be, no. It'd be a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the runner. Pitts gets away on ball four. And the Gators have runners at first and second with two out. Two, two strikeouts and two walks allowed by Wiggins. And. The important thing here is the 20 pitch inning that's still going on. You want to get that pitch count up as quick as you can on a guy like Wiggins because he's a guy that is difficult to hit. As I mentioned, team's only batting 169 against him. That's why the one, two, three inning from uh, Brandon Neely was big, Nick. Neely threw just 12 first inning pitches. Yeah, and, and anything under 15 is outstanding. So now here's B.T. Ryopel. Ryopel hitting 316, but with the top average on the club in league play at 310. He has hit safely in seven of his last eight games. 10 base hits, last 28 at bats. Good change up right there. That was the pitch that he's really improved on since a year ago. Jackson Wiggins averages 88 pitches per start. This is his eighth start of the year. And he's averaged right at five and two thirds innings per start. Had a no decision last week against Mississippi State. Went five innings. Razorbacks lost the game 5-3, but Wiggins wasn't involved in that decision. Wiggins' best start came following his worst start. On March 20th against Kentucky, went six innings, struck out eight, didn't allow a run picked up his third win in a three to one victory. Fouled it back. The start before the Kentucky series against Illinois Chicago, he went just three and a third innings. And they give up one hit, but he was responsible for five runs scoring. Arkansas managed to win the game, nevertheless, 10-8. Two and two. And another changeup got him. He strikes out the side. It's a strikeout, a walk, a strikeout, a walk. Michael Turner. Razor back, back stop. Goes after the first pitch and lofts it into shallow left. The shortstop Rivera goes back and makes the play. And 
First five hitters retired by Brandon Neely. Yeah, time to revisit where the wind is. Just like last night, making a difference here today, blowing straight out to right field. Yeah, about 16 miles an hour, but it looks stiffer than that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all the 16 yeah. right there. So here's Brady Slavens. Boy, strike one right in there. Slavens four for eight in the series, so he's a tough out. He had three hits last night, including a triple. It was the only extra base hit for the Razorbacks. Arkansas out hit the Gators 10 to 9 last night, but the Gators winning at 7 to 2. In fact, Arkansas is hitting 306 in this series. They had 12 hits in their win Thursday, and then 10 hits, as I mentioned, in last night's loss. The 0 2 pitch got him. And that's a very impressive six up and six down through two innings by Brandon Neely. And after an inning and a half, still no score. Neely got him. He said, hey, I can do this thing. Rolling right along. Gators coming to bat. Mick and Nick back with you here at the ballpark as we come to the bottom half of the second inning. It'll be Kendrick Catalao, Josh Rivera, Matt Gassetti in the six, seven, and eight spots against Jackson Wiggins, who drops in a curveball for strike one. And we have a weather alert looking at the weather app. We have a wind advisory now. And Nick, I just checked. They say the wind is now increased to 24 miles an hour. And we believe it. Absolutely. 24 mile an hour out toward right field. Line drive, base hit for Kalanon. Wow. Three for seven in this series. Kalanon, again, the whole recipe here this weekend, try to slow down the opposition, get that leadoff man on. He gives a nice swing down and through. Line drive, and let's see if this affects Wiggins here with the leadoff man on. So now here's Josh Rivera. Hitting 279. Ball one to Rivera. One for six on the weekend. Feel like we're at Candlestick Park. Robert Moore. Hat blew off. He had to go retrieve it. Over the last eight games, Rivera hitting 310. Had a good game Tuesday night against Florida A&M going three for five. No score, bottom of the second inning. Rubber game of the series. And there's strike one. Gators averaging 7.1 runs per game. The Razorbacks 7.7 .7 runs a game. Kalila not really a threat to go. Hasn't attempted a stolen base all year. But this is a hit and run count. Back up the middle. Moore flips on to battles and back to first. They've turned the double play. Outstanding keystone combination. Moore to battles and out of Stovall. Yeah, they're about as good as there is in college baseball today, these two. Watch the exchange. Now you got the shift going, so it's a little funky move, but Battles gets it 
ball in left hand as he's coming across the plate. He has to right his body and then fire a strike to first. That's the 24th double play the Razorbacks have turned. They lead the league in fielding with a 985 percentage, which is fourth best in the nation. Gator defense turned a pair of double plays against Arkansas last night. Gators are the third best defense in the league. And here's another base hit. Mac Gassetti singling for his first hit of the series. Gassetti since been put in the lineup regularly starting last weekend against Athens on the road where he went six for 12, continues to impress at the plate. To a two out base runner, now here's the Gators third baseman, Derek Fabian. One for three, had a double in an RBI last night. Also drew a walk. Thursday night, Razorbacks were leading 3 0, and then the game got away from Florida late. Arkansas had a very big 8 to 1 win. Here's one that gets away from Turner. Gassetti to second base. And again, I got to think that's a pass ball. We've seen a few of those from Turner this weekend. I mean, it wasn't a great pitch, but catchable. Gators jumped on the Hogs last night. They have scored that, a wild pitch. Yeah. The Gators got two runs in the first inning last night, two in the second, another in the third, opening up a 5 nothing lead en route to that 7-2 Florida win. So 3 and nothing now to Fabian with leadoff hitter Colby Halter. Waiting in the on-deck circle. Let's see what Kevin O'Sullivan decides to do here. Does he green line him or take a pitch? Probably takes a pitch here with Holter on deck, the more veteran guy. Went right through there for a called strike. Yeah, that's, I thought Sully would take it there. If it was like Lankford or Thompson or Judd Fabian, he'd probably been swinging. Gassetti at second with two down. Three balls, one strike to Derek Fabian. The pitch from Jackson Wiggins. Here it is. Fly ball, right center field. And the center fielder, Braden Webb, over to make the catch to retire the side. The Gators got a pair of singles, but failed to score. And we go to the third inning. Still nothing, nothing. No score as we go to the top of the third. Gators have a couple of hits. And they also left three men on base. I guess the early story for the Gators, I love pitchers that have a good 12-6, but in this case, it's the 12-6 of kneeling, not the pitch, but 12 pitches in the first and only six in the second. How about that for a 12-6? That's pretty efficient. 18-pitch, two-inning outing so far. Jalen Battles leads off the Arkansas third, fouling it out of play. From San Antonio. One for six in the series. Battles played two years at McLennan Texas Community College before arriving in Fayetteville. Last year he hit 269, had 58 hits in 61 starts. <laughs> Fouled out of play again. You notice when Neely throws, he has that Oral Hershiser little turn with his with his neck before he comes forward. 
He repeats it every time, and that's the key. Well, that's a beauty right there. Third strikeout for Neely. Boy, that slider is a dandy. Now watch this out of the hand. It looks like a fastball. Then just changes direction. Swings right through it. Pretty impressive stuff early on here for Neely. Here's the Arkansas first baseman, Peyton Stovall. Went change up first pitch. Stovall, four for eight on the weekend. A pair of hits in each game. Brandon Neely looking a lot like Connor Nolan of the Arkansas staff here on Thursday night. Same kind of off-speed pitches, not overpowering, but it was one of those games where Thursday night Nolan was so good. You know, you, you think, of the, why aren't they hitting this guy? Yeah, change of speeds. He went change up, change up, fastball right here. Let's see if he goes back, change up. That's three consecutive Razorbacks who have struck out. Yeah, the sequence, change up, change up, showed him the fastball, then comes back with a nice combio right here. Swings right through it. Four strikeouts already. So now here's Zach Gregory. Neely has struck out five hitters twice this year, including last week at Georgia in a five-inning relief appearance, he struck out five. In two innings, he struck out five at North Florida on March 1st. That's pretty good. Zach Gregory went 0 for 4, struck out twice Thursday night. Did not play last night. 275 hitter. The ball finds have been hit by pitch six times already this season. Robert Moore with seven leads in that department, but more has a lot more ABs. Kind of amazing, isn't it? Eight up and eight down, struck out three in a row, and here's the nine hole hitter. He goes to three and one. The beauty of baseball. Yeah, a two out walk just drives a coach crazy. I'm gonna straight challenge him here. And he does. Three and two. Gregory, a redshirt junior from Keller, Texas. Never gave himself a chance there. The Arkansas Razorbacks with their first base runner of the game. And always a difference when you got a guy on base, how it changes up, how a pitcher's pattern is. Does he get the same feel for the fastball in the off speed? Caden Wallace, team captain, probably the most consistent guy on the ball club. Wallace retired on a comebacker to start the game. Wallace tied an Arkansas freshman record last year, hitting 14 home runs. Led the ball club with 67 hits. Now Ryopel will go out and try and Get Neely back on track. And again, slow him down. He's now pitching with a runner on base. Dynamic changes right there. And based on that, your your tempo, your flow, everything 
it's a little off kilter because let's face it the first eight guys nice full wind up tempo is exactly how you wanted to set it now you got to make the adjustment Gregory at first base, two gone here in the Razorback third inning. Fouled out of play to the right side. Zach Gregory, who's three for three in stolen bases, has a very unique lead. He's way open. But his body basically going towards second base. Now when you have a lead like that, you can't take that big a lead because if your body is all the way open to second base, a good quick spin move type of move will get you. Does he feel uh, that gives him advantage when he is stealing? Le oh. Angling like that. Well, you know, I've I've seen guys through the years where where they're practically so open, they're almost like in a track stance going to second. But but if you got a, like a Kyle Hendricks spin move to first, you can't venture off. See right there, it's you can't take that big a lead. Otherwise, every throw over there is going to be hold your breath. Now, if you if you do take your move to second base. Yeah, you'll, you'll get that first step advantage, of course. But when you're that open, like a throw right there on the money, right at the bag, you can you can get him. Because it's going to take him longer to get back to the base than if he took a more balanced lead. And a more balanced lead, you could take a bigger lead. Fouled out of play again down the right side. So it's two and two to Caden Wallace. Well, if nothing else, the Hawks have slowed down Neely here in this inning. Making him work out of the stretch. But a nice comeback from going 2-0 to 2-2. Now a pitch away getting out of this inning. He made 18 pitches in the first two innings. Has made 18 pitches alone here in the third inning. And a half dozen throws to first base. And, and again, because of the way the lead that he has, everything over there on a good move and throw over is going to be hold your breath as he's safer out. And that's fine, but you've got to take a, a shorter lead because of it. The 2-2 two -two pitch from Neely. See, for me at this ballpark, and every cutout at first base is different depending on the ballpark you go to. A good lead would be your right foot somewhere close to the cutout of the base at first. Now at a 3-2 count, you're going to play behind the runner at first base. 3-2-2 two, two out, that's usually the defensive play. The Gators decide to employ it. Can Neely make a pitch right here? He can, but the ball has a little English kicking away from Kalilau. And they're going to hold the runner at third. That ball was trouble after it left its bat. You could just see that Kalilau was going to have a struggle down there. Well, Kalilau's played over because of the 3-2 count. And he just goes under his glove and hits him in the foot. Now, he had to move to his left, but just couldn't make the play. And Gregory, big turnaround third. So the Hogs now with runners in scoring position. All this coming after two out. After Neely had set down the first eight Razorback hitters in order. Now here's the center fielder, Braden Webb. They still have not officially scored the play yet. Strike one there to Webb, who flew out to the left fielder Langford in the first inning. And they're going to score it a two base hit to Caden Wallace. 
pig out to get right here. Because of the three and six start, everything is magnified this weekend. That's why last night's win was so big. And getting a win today and winning this series would be huge against the number two team in the nation. Well, you got a base open. That's the good news. The bad news, Robert Moore, clutch hitter on deck with the wind blowing out to right. Webb is three for ten in the series. And has struck out four times. Fly ball, right field. Sterling Thompson is under it, and the inning is over. Early, just get it down there somewhere on the grass, and that'll be a very tough play to make. And there's an base hit to right. No doubt about that line drive. Boy, Gators. Aggressive here today. That pitch was up. Halter gets on it. And for the second inning in a row, Gators get the leadoff man on, and let's see how Wiggins responds. Well, 10 Gators have hit in the game, have come to the plate in the game, should say. And of the 10, five have reached base. Three hits with a pair of walks. Judd Fabian lines one to right field near the line, and a catch at the wall by Lanzelli. I think the ball caught the glove. That ball got out there in a hurry with the wind blowing opposite way, and Lanzilli sticks his glove up and <laughs> makes a very, very clutch catch. Well, he, he acts like it's very nonchalant, but it was a rather improbable catch. It appeared to be. Well, he reached up at the last second. He doesn't make that catch, second and third, or at least... At, at, at best, second and third for Arkansas Gators possibly could have scored there. So now Sterling Thompson. 0 for 1 today. Thompson hitting 333. You know, change up to see if Thompson would offer at it. They play him to pull. Shortstop battles, as you can see, right behind the bag. There's a line drive, base hit into center field. Halter makes the turn, coming for three. And the throw, he's in there. And Thompson takes second base. Yeah, missed the cutoff, man, and Thompson, smart player that he is, took advantage and went right on in the second base. By missing your cutoff, man, as he hits the, you see the line drive on the swing. I mean, this guy's swing, you just need to bottle that. I mean, that's not, that's, that's an old school swing. That's doesn't worry about launch angle, it's just nights flat through the zone. And the airmail throw allows Thompson to get to second base and takes away the possible double play scenario. So here's Wyatt Langford, runner second and third. And he fouls the first pitch off. Just little things like that. Thompson recognizing it, taking the extra base, that's huge. Well, the fire alarm has gone off for the Arkansas bullpen. Razorbacks, they honor the playing field. They run on the warning track down the line and on the outfield. That's a little different than LSU. They just sprinted straight across the grass, almost cut in front of the left fielder when doing so. See, I didn't even notice that, man. I'm sure the groundskeeper appreciates it. Ground ball going to get a run in. Moore playing on the shortstop side of the bag. Safe at first base. Langford legged it out. Of course he did. Nobody runs harder down the line in college baseball than Wyatt Langford. 
And if you fall asleep on him like right there, what just happened, he's going to beat it out. You got to attack that ball when Lankford's running. You can't wait for it to get back to you. And that's what happened. Langford's 33rd RBI. And now a meeting on the mound. And the ability of Thompson taking second base, he's now down a third on that play. And you got a guy, Ryapel, with pop from the left side with. Big wind blowing out straight to right field. This meeting right here, Dave Van Horn, the head coach, then he could see the effects of the wind just really blowing straight out to right field. He sent his catcher out there. Michael Turner just to bide some time for the bullpen. Well, thinking, here's, yeah, it's escalating in a hurry, Mick. Ryopel has a 667 percentage now with a runner at third and less than two out. Six RBIs in nine opportunities from Ryopel. Was up in a similar situation last night and got a sacrifice fly. As good as Ryopel is in this situation. Langford has been better, and we just saw that a moment ago. Langford, who just got the uh, base hit there, has eight RBI in nine opportunities with a runner at third and less than two out. And five stolen bases on the year. Fouled out of play to the left. Evan Taylor beginning to warm up for the Razorbacks. The inning began when Halter singled to right. Fabian robbed of a hit on a line drive catch at the wall in right by Lanzelli. But then Thompson singled to center and Langford followed with an infield base hit, scoring Halter. And the Gators take a one to nothing lead. Chase some high heat there. Gators are 15 and three this year when scoring first. Overall, the Gators with 20 wins, 11 losses, four and seven in the league. Arkansas at 23 and six, and eight and three in the Southeastern Conference. Runners on the corners, one away. And Wiggins this year has had plenty of quality starts. The team that he had trouble with was UIC, University of Illinois Chicago, where he only went three in the third innings, gave up five earned runs, but only surrendered one hit. It's not the case here today. Full count. 67 pitch outing in that one was his shortest to date. He's on the ropes here at 51. Yeah, he had a 25 pitch first inning. And a 15 pitch second inning got bailed out in the second inning thanks to a Razorback double play ball. A 3-2 pitch. There goes the runner. The pitch driven into center field. Webb is going back and back, and it is gone! Oh, my! Ryan Pell poked one out of the ballpark in right center field, a ball that went about 400 feet. I told you what BT stands for, big time. And that was a big time to get that one.
Wind blowing out, 3-2 pitch, sitting fastball, gets it and delivers. He does a great job of going down and getting pitches. He did that last night with the home run, does it again here. And that thing's long out of here. So Raya Pell goes all early lever with a three-run home run. And the Gators with a four-to-nothing lead. Kate Wallace recovering in time to throw out Kendrick Callalau. That was the Gators' 60th home run of the year, second most in the league. That brings up Josh Rivera. Fouled to the right side. Long run for the right fielder, but out of reach of Chris Lanzelli. Well, Gators a year ago, and he mentioned that home run number, only 71 home runs, which wasn't awful, but that just shows you how much better they're doing this year in that department. And a lot of it has to do with the emergence of Wyatt Langford and the guy you just saw, B.T. Ryapel. That was just Florida's seventh three-run home run of the year. Now it skips in front of Turner. So a four-run inning in this rubber game in the series. Fair ball. Wallace throws him out. So in the inning, the Gators break the scoreless tie, getting four runs on four hits with the big blast by Ryapel. Well, Ryapel says, okay, I'm the team leader. I'm going to do it again just like he did last night. Gives the Gators a big 4 nothing lead. Gators with a four to nothing lead on a wind blown day here at the ballpark. Sunny but cool with the temperature in the middle 60s. That wind makes it feel a little crisper than it is. Nick, this is a very big inning right now for Brandon Neely. Yeah, big shutdown opportunity here. He breezed through with 18 pitches over the first two innings. Wobbled a little bit, 25 pitch, third inning, and now he had to sit in the dugout for a while after the Gators got the four runs. The ball into strike, the count on Robert Moore. May have chased one up and away there. And Neely's a guy that's been coming on and evident of his last outing prior to this at Georgia, a relief stint where he went five innings, three runs, didn't walk a guy, five strikeouts. That's a leadoff base hit to center field for Robert Moore on a one-two pinch. Moore such a good hitter. I well, got that pitch up. Yeah, he did. Made him pay, and that's what a good hitter will do. That's three of the last four Arkansas hitters to reach base. After Brandon Neely opened the game by retiring the first eight hog hitters. And Kevin O'Sullivan won't wait too long if things escalate here to get the bullpen up. He's got Ryan Slater out there. So here's Chris Lanzelli. I think Slater might be the first guy in today. Well, how many pitches do you think Slater threw in the bullpen last night? Yeah. He was up for about three innings. Yeah. I would think he had to have thrown 40 to 50. 
but pitchers will tell you they're, they're less stressful pitchers out there than in the game so your adrenaline's going just a little bit more and I'm sure though this right here is just to get them to reset the two balls and no strikes on the cleanup hitter Chris Lanzelli that ball hit to left a mile high and Langford camping under it. <laughs> a nice throw to second base. That wind just knifed through that ball. That had no chance to carry with that wind blowing straight out uh, against it. So Lanzilli has flied to left and he earlier has flied out to right. Now catcher Michael Turner. Turner's dad drafted in the 40th round by the Yankees 1989 went on to play eight years professionally and we mentioned last night the Dayton Turner the president of the baseball operations with the Royals One ball, one strike. Robert Moore, another one that leans with his body leaning towards second base when he's set. And again, when you do that, you're not in balance and you, and you would have to, at that point, shorten your lead up. See, everything's leaning towards the right, and that it will expose you on a good spin move. Two balls, one strike. Philip Abner has now joined Ryan Slater. Yeah, Abner's a guy that's been pitching well as of late and earning more opportunities. That's a line drive to right. Will fall in front of Thompson. So again, that Razorbacks threatening here in the fourth inning. Moore stopping at second. Turner on at first. Yeah, this is a potent hitting ball club. Turner, guy that came into this game leading them in hitting with 349 batting average. Nice line drive. Good stop there. It's a tricky hop by Thompson. It's not the easiest thing, too, as an outfielder where Thompson is. Whoever's playing right field today, you're going to have to be throwing it totally against the, a 25 to 30 mile an hour gust wind. Not easy to do. Well, now a dangerous hitter in Brady Slavens. Three hits last night, four hits of the series. If I was a third base coach today and any ball hit the right field, I'd be sending everybody because you're throwing against the wind. It's going to make a difference. Coach Thompson knows. I, hey, right field, it's it's go time. Both sides. Now, this ballpark's been open now for two years. I guess a year and change now. That's, that's the strongest win I've seen since we've been here today. So it's definitely a factor. Judd Fabian ranging over, makes the catch, and the runners will stay put. See, and he would have made it the third had he gone because Fabian going with his body over away from third base had to stop throw against that wind. And you saw it died on the vine getting to, to Rivera. You know, at the, at the old ballpark at McKeithen, which is about a mile away from this site, the wind blowing 
from the west would have been blowing straight out yeah. to left field. And to your point, Nick, I, I don't recall any 24-mile-an-hour winds at McKeithen that blew out to left field. That's true. <laughs> this is really something. Two singles and two fly balls for the Razorbacks here in the fourth. Now Jalen battles the hitter. Battle struck out on a nasty slider from Brandon Neely back in the third inning. That's a base hit into left. Moore being waved in. The throw cut off. And it's now 4-1. to one. On an RBI base hit for Battles, driving in his 20th run of the year. Boy, well, Arkansas really needed that. Pitch was up, he made him pay. Kid's a good ball player. You see Moore right here is gonna take the turn around third base and they're sending him all the way and really not a whole lot Langford can do. But right now, potential tie run at the plate and a left-handed hitter with, with some pop. Peyton Stovall, 0 for 1. Striking out on a changeup in the third inning, but having a good weekend. 4 for 9. And strike one. Arkansas has won 13 straight SEC series. That's the longest active streak in the league. Razorbacks are chasing the SEC record that is held by Vanderbilt and Florida at 15 consecutive SEC series wins. That's a good place to throw a pitch right there or do you go change and get them to chase something out of the zone. Even though he's labored over the last two innings, he still has, Nick, about a 15-pitch an inning yeah. average. Can make quick work right here of Stovall. One and two. Piled back. So fastball, change up, fastball. Let's see if he goes back to the change. But if he does, he's got to get that in a lower slot than the last time he threw it. Just missed inside, two and two. A little comeback to it, but not enough. Not enough, it, it, and that was a good call. It did just miss. But they do have him set up here on that fastball inside for the changeup. Let's see what Sully decides to do. <laughs> That's reminiscent of Stu Miller yep. in the All-Star game at Candlestick. Blew him right off the mound. Not no, that this is Nick, not that you and I have been around a while, but that was 60 <laughs> years ago in the 1962 All-Star game. I think one of my <laughs> best friends in the whole world, Hal Lanier, who played, I think, seven years at Candlestick. He said you just get got used to it. It's all, all you could do, but he said it was definitely an advantage of playing shortstop at Candlestick Park. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two out. Try to backdoor him with a slider. That was borderline. Turner at second, battles at first. That's a tough pitch to take right there. Tying run at the plate. And now the bases are loaded. I 
And Gregory, left-handed hitter, dangerous. Three home runs, three doubles on the air, hitting 279 coming in. So the tie runs on base, and here's Zach Gregory. He walked in his first plate appearance. Said Gators would love to get four out of Neely today. Now he's back in the full windup. This could be an advantage. In the last six games, Z Zach Gregory, five for 19. Well, that looked like that ball had dropped in. It looked like it was knee high coming in and then fell off. He's got to bounce back. I mean, that won't be the last call he disagrees with. Now he's a pitch away from getting out of this. It'll be pitch number 70. In 25 pitches last inning. This will be 27 pitch of this inning. Hit the knob of the bat. Gators caught a break there. Yeah, it could easily hit the player and caught the knob of the bat. It did not hit him on the hands. Of course, the hands are part of the bat, so that wouldn't have worked either. Big pitch to make right here. Well, these are some tough pitches to take on two strike counts. Sully's perplexed. Well, Gregory showed that his last plate appearance when he drew a walk on three and two. And here he is again. Seventh pitch of the at bat. Another 3 2 delivery. The runner's moving and fouled off. But Neely's made some really good pitches. Gators hoping he's got one more left in him. 72 pitches. This next pitch will be his career high. Three balls, two strikes. It'll be a merry-go-round on the base pass. Fly ball hit toward right field, and it's going to fall in for a base hit. And with the runners moving, they're all going to score, and the Razorbacks have tied the game on Gregory's 3-2, two, two out, three-run double to right field. Sixth double of the year, and it just finds a home and eludes Thompson who couldn't get to it so crowd not happy about it as the ball just lands like a sack of clams out there and as you said with 3-2 all three runs scoring easily and I'll guarantee you when Sully is going to wait for the umpire, he's going to make the pitching change here, but I'm sure he'll wait for the home plate umpire to get out there. Sully is staring a hole right at Tony, right through Tony Walsh.
in the third inning. So far, both teams have scored four runs on four hits. The Gators got their four in the third. The Razorbacks with four and still batting with their four hits here in the fourth inning. Derek Fabian throws out Wallace. The inning is over. But the crowd with a chorus of boos for the home plate umpire. A 4-4 score. Brand new game, four runs, five hits for the Razorbacks. Four runs, six hits for the Gators. Last half of the fourth inning, Matt Cassetti, followed by Derek Fabian, and then the top of the order with Colby Halter. Jackson Wiggins, still out there for Arkansas, the Razorback starter. Four wins, no losses for Wiggins. That pitch will unnerve you. 97 up and in. Gassetti singled in the second inning. Hitting 325. Making his 15th start of the year today. Oh, he chased a bad ball there and he popped it up. Could be an adventure though. And it's caught by Stovall. Yeah, Stovall had to reach back because the wind blowing towards right field at the very end. They had to negotiate the sun in the effects of the wind here today. wants to lay down a bunt it's there for him third baseman Wallace playing six steps seven steps behind third base Derek Fabian flying out to Braden Webb in center field his first trip the Gators snapping their six game SEC losing streak last night in the seven games in which they've gone one and six, hitting just 203, which ironically was the same batting average they had in the series coming into the game today, 203 this weekend. And he calls him out on strikes. This pitch is going to. Look like it's off the plate and a great job by Turner to bring it back and got the frame. Two up, two down. Here's Colby Halter. Halter one for two, singled and scored in the third, and this one is fouled out of play down the left side. This is a big shutdown opportunity here for Wiggins. Gators jolted him an inning ago, and his team responded and matched it with four. And Wiggins is well on his way to getting out of this inning. And rather quickly. Fastball still 96 to 98 this inning. Gators go one, two, three in the fourth. After four innings at Florida Ballpark, it's the Hogs four and the Gators four. He missed on some pitches. 
That could have gone either way. Well, I would imagine that uh, his performance today puts him in good stead to get the ball next week at Vandy. I really think it does. The formula of Slater is a guy that you can use in this role all three games, so you keep him ready to go in all three, and then you, you maybe sit Neely for the third game. I agree with you. One away. And we've seen Slater come in in relief and pitch multiple innings a lot. Chase is a high pitch. Against Jacksonville March 8th, Slater went five innings relief. And at Alabama on the 19th of March, went five innings relief. So now Robert Moore, one for two in the game. But not that it is expected to get any easier because it doesn't when the Gators go on this four-game road swing Tuesday night at Florida State and then on to Nashville next weekend. They're back here for a midweek game in a week and a half against Stetson. And then the Tennessee Volunteers roll into town. And another strikeout of Moore. Pitch on the inner third. Good job by Ryapel to get the call. It's one of those deals. You know, you got two strikes. If you're particular up there, things like that's going to happen to you. Chris Lanzelli now with a fly to right and a fly to left in today's game. Right over our heads and onto the roof. Yeah, Gators from a momentum standpoint would love to have a quick inning here. And Slater is doing just that. Two, three, and four in the order is the job he had to do this inning. Slater very unique when he rears back and gets ready to take the ball out of his glove. He almost taps the ball into his glove, <laughs> then he separates. Makes him unique in this windup. Lanzilli 0 for 2 in the game. Tough play. That'll be a base hit. This had all kind of spin on it. And you're going to throw that ball right out of play, I would think. Umpire changing balls. It hit off the end of the bat. When that happens, this has all kind of spin and just died. Really nothing you can do on that. Because a guy like Lanzilli, you're playing him deep as it is. So both teams now with four runs on six hits. The inning alive for Michael Turner. Singleton scored back in the fourth. In the last half of the fifth inning, the Gators are scheduled to bat Judd Fabian, Sterling Thompson, and Wyatt Langford in the two, three, and four spots. Turner, the grad transfer out of Kent State. Wow. 
right back to Slater. Inning over. No runs a hit. A man left. We're halfway through and we've decided nothing. It's 4-4. Four, four. Mick and Nick back with you here at the ballpark. The fans swinging and swaying to We Are the Boys of Old Florida as we go to the last half of the fifth inning. And a 4-4 score. Wait a minute, Nick. I'm, I'm posing for a television for a fans <laughs> picture <laughs> right here, right now. There you go. Thank you. All right. Luckily, he wasn't an oil painting. He'd be there all day. Fans yeah. could just stand up and look into the TV booth and take your photo and have a conversation with you. We carry on multiple conversations. Are you encouraging that? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> Come on up and ask Rick a question. <laughs> he doesn't mind. <laughs> Judd Fabian leading off the home fifth inning. Goes after the first breaking ball on a pop fly to right. Could be some trouble. And in the triangle it falls for a base hit. This is an amazing day today with the wind howling to right at 24 mile an hour. Nick, we've seen some little Texas League flares that fall in. That's right. <laughs> Texas League. And you know, you know, the Texas League, or people realize it got its name when on May 21st in 1892, Ollie Pickering got seven hits in a Texas League game, and they were all of that variety. <laughs> That's hard to do. And when the word got out that this guy got seven blue pits in the Texas League, they started referring to those type of hits as Texas Leaguers. I wonder if the wind had a factor in that. It's, it's always blowing in Texas. No it? question. Sterling Thompson fouls it to the left side. So Fabian got himself an Ollie Pickering hit. <laughs> He might be the only guys honoring Ollie Pickering today. There's a little opposite field shot to left. And that flare falls in, and the Gators have runners at first and second with nobody out here in the fifth. Thompson with two hits. Not quite a Texas leaguer, but that'll do. Soft line drive going opposite way, something that Thompson is as good at doing as anybody. Evan Taylor again loosening out in the Razorback bullpen. They Jackson are, Wiggins still they, in there for they Arkansas. Are, they are looking, Bunt. Out of play down the right side. That's something we didn't see a whole lot of last night. I was looking at going over my scorecard this morning, and there weren't a whole lot of foul balls last night, and particularly very few two-strike foul balls. Uh, that helped to quicken the pace of the game. It was played rather briskly last night, just two hours, 40 minutes. That pitch drilled out to center field, way back, and back, and it is gone! Wyatt Langford lost one into the Disney Group. Ryan Pell hit a home run last night, left on left. And has the first Gator three run home run today. Two and one to count. And 
bunts it foul. Good idea. Had that ball been fair, he, that's an easy base hit. There's no way Wallace, where he was playing him, shifted, would have been over in time to pick it, pick the ball up and throw it with Ryapel going from the left side of the batter's box. So good idea. Still nobody out, so you think of it like Ryapel saying, okay, I'll, I'm thinking myself as starting an inning over. Nobody on base. So I like the idea. Ryapel strikes out swinging for the first out of the inning. Yeah, that's that nasty slider he possesses. Callie now one for two today. Another hat flew off. This time Stovall, the first baseman. Callie now in his fourth season with the Gators. And still has another year to compete. Drove in the most runs of his career in his first season, 2019. He had 49 RBI with 60 base hits that year and 59 starts. There's a ball hit to left. Gregory is back, and he'll make the catch. Right there where that ballpark juts out a little bit. And because the wind is cutting across from left to right, it definitely knocked that ball down. Ballpark like that has a little bit of a little bit of Wrigley Field to the outfield wall where it kind of yeah, blows out. A little character to it, yeah. yes. Josh Rivera. I wonder if it's any warmer at Wrigley today than it was Thursday when they Played at 44 degrees. Well, I know the ivy's not blooming yet. <laughs> Yesterday's game was uh, comboed, rained and snowed out. Let's see whether they're going to make that up as a day-night doubleheader, May 30th. Be a lot of doubleheaders in Major League Baseball this year. Yeah, like the old days. And no seven-inning games. Yeah, growing up, uh, we would always go. I lived near, in Chicago, and mm -hmm. we would always go to the doubleheaders. Uh, we, I don't recall ever ever staying for the full 18 innings. There's a base hit to right in the vacated second base hole. So it's just the idea of getting bonus baseball. Even if you went for 14 or 15 innings, you thought, hey, that's a good deal today. Yeah, one <laughs> ticket buys you, what, eight hours of entertainment, seven hours? And what I love that Rivera's been doing is going opposite way this weekend. Because they need his bat. He, he's a guy with all kinds of talent. And down there where he bats in the order in the seven hole, that would be great if he could start getting consistent production down there from him because we know he's got the ability. Mac Gassetti, single to the second, one for two. Cassetti gives you a good at bat, aggressive hitter. Last night didn't get a hit, but reached on an arrow walk and lined out. The 
The Gators got four runs in the third inning. Three coming off the bat of B.T. Ryapel. But the Hogs answered with four runs in the fourth inning. Three coming on a two-out, bases-loaded double by Zach Gregory. Tied the game 4-4. But the Gators get a three-run home run from Langford here in this inning. There goes the runner. And the throw down is in time. And it. Brian Slater came out the scene with two out in the fourth inning in relief of Brandon Neely, who was outstanding for two innings, but then was knocked out of the four-run fourth. Still probably deserved a better fate, although did not become the pitcher of record today. That ball hit well to left near the line, and it's going to fall in for a base hit. And here goes Battles into second, and he is going to be safe. I don't know if we're going to take a look at this, but I'll say one thing. Battles hustling all the way, thinking he had two right out of the box. Actually, a little late start getting out. Now he starts getting it going. Ricky might have got that left hand in there. The tag was to the outside. He got his hand, it looked like, to the inside, but they're going to take a look at it. Got a couple of reviews last night. First one here today. I think he might have gotten that left hand in. That look there is not going to show anything different to overturn it. It's amazing, Nick, that we've seen Arkansas get doubles on fly balls that have landed just inside the left field line and just inside the right field line and have hit the grass and just dropped and yeah. stopped. Yeah, both both of them, you know, landed like like I said, a sack of clams. It just just darted. So yeah. you wonder was do you think that ball hit to left would have been a foul ball on the berm? Yeah. With the 24-mile-an-hour win, it pushed it into fair territory. Yeah, it definitely helped it. I mean, just look at it. Look at the poles wobbling back and forth. So a one-out double for Battles. Just his fourth double of the year. Here's Peyton Stovall. Walked and scored in the fourth. Stovall was hit by a pitch on Thursday. And he's gotten four base hits in the series. So he's been on base a lot. He was the top ranked prospect in Louisiana last year. Put together an 11 game hitting streak earlier this season. And was anointed by D1 Baseball as the preseason freshman collegiate player of the year. He went 0 for 13 last weekend against Mississippi State. And it ball is off Catalao to foul territory. Here comes Battles in to score. And a tough day at first base for Kalilau. He scored that in error. And it's 7-5. to five. Yeah, the spin eats him up. And it, the bad news, though, is it kicks over in the foul territory and allows the run to score. It's one thing making the error, but the bad luck of having it kick to the left that far. 
And it brings the tying run to the plate. Jack Gregory, he's been a thorn in the Gators' side today. He's had both plate appearances run the count full, drawing a walk on a six-pitch at bat. And into the fourth inning, on an eight-pitch at bat, takes a 3-2 pitch and clears the bases with a three-run double. Well, it's funny you say tying a run into play because he tied the game up. So having a good day. And he just gets hit. Yeah, I talked about his propensity for getting hit by a pitch. Well, it's interesting because these two pitching staffs have hit more batters than any other staffs in the league. The Gators are, have the dubious distinction of hitting more batters than anybody else. In fact, entering the game today, the Gator pitchers were averaging 1.52 hit batters a game and that's on pace for a school record the record is 1.25 back in 2013 when the Gators hit 74 batters in that season and with that hit batter right there now they're on their way to uh, breaking that record that was the 48th guy they've hit but now the potential lead runner strolls to the plate. And remember that, the game we had a couple of weeks ago in the LSU series, the Gators hit eight Tigers in that one game. Not in the series, but that one night. Yeah, and 10 is the NCAA record in a game. Gregory, that was the seventh time he's been hit this year, which ties their team lead. Robert Wallace also with seven. I'm sorry, Robert Moore. Owen oh 2 on Wallace. Right back to Slater, but an errant throw. They're only going to get one. They had an opportunity at the 1-4-3 one one double play, but they get a force at second base for two out. Yeah, that's the second time in as many nights a throw had to be corralled in that area on a possible 1-6-3 double play or a 1-4, in this case, three double play. That ball is almost airmailed, and Halter did the best he could to catch it and make the tag. Last night, Rivera had to do that. Sprout got it and almost airmailed it, and Rivera made a great catch and turned the double play. So that's two in a row in as many nights or as many games. Stovall at third with... Wallace out at first, and here is Braden Webb. Webb had a stretch in March where he homered in three consecutive games. He homered against Kentucky and Missouri between March 19th and March 25th, three games in a row. Leading the Razorbacks with eight long balls this year. Three and nothing. And this one gets away. Run will not score, but Wallace moves to second. Well, it doesn't really matter because that loads them up and brings Sully out of the dugout. Four wide ones to Webb. That ball got away far, far enough to, I would think, merit a chance to try to score there. I don't know what happened. I mean, this is just a straight out talk on what they're going to do on the uh, scouting report on Robert Moore. 
But Nick, once again, the Gators are struggling with a shutdown inning after yeah. they take the lead. Arkansas is just one healthy swing away from being in front. Well, the Gators are definitely settle for Arkansas just getting one run this inning and get back in the dugout with a two-run lead going into the bottom of the sixth, but they got to get a tough out here. Probably the most clutch guy Arkansas had all of last year in situations like this. Mora struck out twice, both looking. And the last time he batted, he had a few words with Tony Walsh behind the plate on a called third strike. I mean, he's only hitting 205 in the conference, but Robert Moore, just a dangerous hitter, got the inning going back in the fourth with a base hit on a 1-2 count. Five straight balls thrown by Slater. And the Hogs are in the driver's seat right now. Moore's got some pop. Slater. So you, got, you got to be careful of him, Mac, even though it's a 2-0 count. Yeah, and Slater's lost his uh, control. No need to swing right now. Because he's missing so much away, he saw what Ryapel did. He set up way inside, and he still missed away. So right now, this is mechanical. Tyler Nesbitt loosening up in the Gators bullpen. Can't find the plate. Walks in a run. It's seven to six. Just a routine getaway day in the SEC. Mm -hmm. And here's the cleanup hitter, Lanzilli. Reached on an infield hit the last time at. Makes a strike. It's almost like he was unnerved by hitting yeah. the left-handed hitter, Gregory, and that's why he was so far away from Moore. I think you're exactly right. Gregory's done big damage in that nine hole spot. And he's really been the, the table setter in this inning so far. We talked about Lanzelli. Almost 50 career home runs as a collegian. And now you're one pitch at getting out of this mess. Cade Wallace at third, Braden Webb at second, Robert Moore at first. Two out, two in, and the Gators clinging to a one-run lead. Here at the top of the sixth inning. A ball and two strikes to Chris Lanzilli. Lanzilli hitting cleanup. Hit a game-winning home run in the ninth inning to beat Seton Hall in a game a couple of years ago. He's hit a couple of grand slams in his career. And this one comes in. He's claiming it hit him. Tony Wall says it's a foul ball. Well, if you're swinging or offering at the pitch and the ball hits your hand, the, ha the hand becomes part of the bat. That is the rule. Now, if you're trying to get out of the way of a pitch and the ball hits you in the hand, that's a whole different deal. And that's where they're looking to check. So another video replay. First, does it hit the bat or the hand? Oh, yeah, and then it was he swinging. It's 
It's almost like he's starting his swing. And then he starts to hold up. So there's where they're going to have to make the decision. Did he offer at it or did he not? Because if he offered at it, the hand's part of the bat. If they're saying he didn't offer at it and he was holding up, then it hit his hand, he gets the base. Quick review. They say he offered at it. So that's a foul ball. I think it's the right call because he started his swing. Lanzelli, the eighth Razorback to hit here in the sixth inning. Two balls, two strikes. And he got him swinging. Big strikeout for Slater as the Razorbacks leave the bases loaded. They scored two runs. And we go to the last half of the sixth inning of a one-run Gator lead. Last half of the sixth inning here at the ballpark and the new pitcher coming in for Arkansas, the third of the game for the Razorbacks with his ninth appearance, right-hander Brady Tigert. Yeah, he's their closer and a guy that is one of the better freshman arms in the country. 15 innings, 11 hits. Has only walked three, but has struck out 22. They're hitting 212 against him. A lot of those strikeouts, even though he will touch 97, lives around 93, 94 at the fastball, the, all the rave is with his curveball. That has been his bread and butter pitch that gets most of his strikeouts. It'll be Mac Gassetti, Derek Fabian, and then Colby Halter. Here in the last of the sixth. Gassetti one for two. Seven runs on ten hits for Florida. Six runs, seven hits for Arkansas. Gators had only 12 hits in the first two games of the series. So three and nothing to Gassetti. You got to be taken here. Not even close. So Tiger walks the first hitter he faces. Let's see how the Gators employ this right now. Bunt scenario right here. Gators choose to go that route. But if it is a bunt for a sacrifice, you got to show it early. You can't be cute with it and show it late. Derek Fabian 0 for 2. Fly out and a strikeout looking. Fabian does have three sacrifices on the season. Fabian hitting 245 in his first year with the Gators. There's that curveball with late action. Yeah. 
His better ones I've seen this year start out at the knees and the bottom falls out. One away. Working that curveball to the inside. What makes his curveballs so effective with that late break is that his spin rate, he gets a lot of revolutions per minute. A good spin rate for a, a curveball would be somewhere around 2,700. His is at 3,100, which tells you how much spin he puts on that. Colby Halter lifts one out of play. And I'll put this in perspective. When the Dodgers won the World Series in 2020, their average spin rate on their pitcher's curveball was around 27 to 2,800. He's 400 past that. So he's really gets a great grip on that ball and crazy when you're over 3,000. Right now, he's getting a pretty expanded strike zone. Halter has already struck out twice today. Sandwiched in the middle is a single. That was not a good curveball right there. Understand they're having a little problem in the early week in Major League Baseball with Gripping the ball. Spin rate. Now the third base umpire, Jeffrey Macias, was asking for time. They're checking the pitcher's hand in Major League Baseball now, in addition to the hat and the glove. Well, it's interesting. Last year, and I don't know if this is the reason for it, was the first year in the big leagues in, I want to say, at least a decade that the strikeout rate did not go up from the previous year and everybody thinks that has something to do with it. Fly ball to right. Coming on will be Lanzelli. So two out after the leadoff walk to Gassetti. And that's one of those where the wind Help the defense because that ball would have normally fallen in. The wind blew it enough to where the right fielder Lanzilli could get to it. Judd Fabian singled and scored when he let off in the fifth inning. One for two, two for nine on the weekend. And that's that late break curveball right there. I would imagine that Tigert will pitch very carefully to Fabian. Yeah, I would think a lot of off speed. Fabian leading the league in home runs with 13. See, that's the effectiveness of that pitch. You give up on it. It looked high to Fabian, and then it has that late bite. But I will say this, he's left a few of those up. Gators leading seven to six. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Rubber game of the series. Fabian turned away from that one. Sterling Thompson, a left-hand hitter on deck. And I know Arkansas does not want to face him with that wind blowing out. Three balls, one strike. Yeah, he didn't want no part of Facing Fabian, really, want any part of that. So runners first and second with two out for Sterling Thompson. I wouldn't want any part of this guy either. 
even more so just from the fact he's left-handed hitter could probably neutralize that off speed a little better and then if you hang one up to him that wind blowing out it's going to be another three run homer Thompson has singled twice today straight up the middle and to the opposite field to left two for three batting 344 Tigard has not given up a home run Thompson has 18 hits in his last 47 at bats. Yeah, he is missing glove side with that fastball, and they're going to talk it over. That's the pitch he has the command of right now. And that is his bread and butter pitch. So now three and one. The cleanup hitter, Wyatt Langford, a right hand batter. Would be next. Boy, this has got to be right. Fastball in the right spot if you offer at it here. But will he get a fastball? I don't know. Never know. Probably doubt it. He popped him up. Caden Wallace calling for it and makes a one-handed stab to retire the side. Gators got two walks but could not take advantage. We go to the seventh inning. Still the Gators seven and the Razorbacks six. The seven to six lead for the Gators as the Hogs come to bat here on the top of the seventh inning. Brandon Neely went the first three and two-thirds innings for the Gators. Ryan Slater has been on since two out of the fourth. It'll be Michael Turner, Brady Slavens, and Jalen Battles. Five, six, and seven in Dave Van Horn's batting order here in the Arkansas seventh inning. Turner with one hit in three at-bats. Big swing and a miss on a 91 mile an hour pitch. Arkansas three wins, two losses this year on the road. He just took the best pitch he was probably going to see all day right there. Bounce to Kalilau. Tough hop. He hung with it. Made the play. One away. That's a big out. Get that leadoff guy out. Happened last inning, and then Battles got the, the double, and then it escalated after that. Big swing and a miss by Brady Slavens. Looking for his first hit today after a strikeout and two flyouts to Judd Fabian in center field. Again, down to Kalilau. And he'll make the toss over. Another three to one put out. They've made quick work of Slavens today. A guy that let him in 
Bunch of offensive categories a year ago. And a guy who had three hits last night. Yeah. So now here's Jalen Battles. Two hits and two runs scored for Battles today. And going back to Slavens, a guy left-handed here with all kind of power with the win in his favor as much as it'll be all year long. Popped him up. It's the inning of Cali Lau. <laughs> and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Razorbacks in the seventh. Time for the seventh inning stretch. But the Gators cling to a seven to six lead. half of the seventh inning. Gators seven runs, ten hits. Arkansas six runs, seven hits. Florida has committed the only error of the game. It'll be the four, five, and six hitters with Wyatt Langford stepping in to lead things off here in the last half of the seventh inning. Langford has walked, has reached on an infield hit, and has hit a three-run home run. After going 0 for 4 Thursday night, he has four hits in these last two games. The Gators leading hitter at 353. A guy who played in four games last year for the Gators with no starts. Three and nothing to count. Brady Tigert working for the Razorbacks. Throws it right through there. I think the Gators had maybe a three or four run lead. You green light them there, but this game's pretty tight. Pitch looked a little high. Yeah, looked up and away. Gets the call as the ball tailed back. From 3-0 to a strikeout. Went with that bread and butter pitch of his. 78 mile an hour curveball, but it's the late sharp break on it. Watch this thing just dive at the end. So B.T. Ryapel, who has struck out and homered and struck out. The home run in the third, a three-run blast, gave the Gators a four-to-nothing lead. See if he can time up one of those curveballs, get it up in the jet stream. The fastball today, which he just threw, 93. It was the fastball that he got Thompson out on. On that 3-1 pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Kendrick Cattledow on deck. The 3-2 pitch. 
Tuck him out. And back to the bread and butter. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Tiger here on the seventh. Yeah, he's going to be a tough customer, and you'll see right here. Just such late break on that pitch. Cali now, one for three. Oh, it makes that pitch also effective. It's about a 14 to 15 mile an hour differential between that and his fastball. So another three ball count. They've got their their big guy, Zebulon Vermillion, up in throwing. We saw him in the Thursday night game. Probably swung at ball four there. Three and two. He threw a three two curveball to get Langford out on. And he struck out the side. We go now to the eighth inning. It remains Florida seven and Arkansas six. Mick and Nick back with you here at the ballpark. Our most competitive game of the series. Arkansas winning big Thursday night. The Gators winning big yesterday, but this one is 7-6. Florida in the lead as we come to the eighth inning. Peyton Stovall against Ryan Slater. Brandon Neely threw 74 pitches as the starter. Three and two thirds innings. Fifty five pitches from Slater as the other Gator pitcher today. Halter staying with it, throwing him out. But the Gators have done a great job. Since the first game of this series, getting the Arkansas leadoff man out. This is uh, now eight innings of this. They've retired the leadoff man, seven of them. Now yeah, only in the uh, fourth inning did they get that leadoff man on. And subsequently, they would score four times in that frame. So now Zach Gregory. They can't get him out today. He went 0 for 4 Thursday, sat out yesterday, and today a walk, bases clearing, three run double, hit by pitch. Five foot 10 left hand hitter from Keller, Texas. Blake Purnell now loosening in the Gators' bullpen. One ball, one strike. Yeah, you can't afford to, to lose Gregory here with the top of the order coming up. You'd love to face him with two out, nobody on. Purnell, the workhorse out there in the bullpen. And the fly ball hit to right field. You can forget about it. This ball is long gone, and Gregory has done it again. And this game is tied again. 7-7. Seven, seven. A 
And four RBIs today for the nine hole hitter. He puts a charge into this one. Got it up. Little bat flip, and you saw Tony Walsh just run down there with him. And he thought that may have been problematic. But he has been a thorn, no question about it. So the Gators have lost a four to nothing lead today. And they've lost a seven to four lead today. And that's going to be all for Ryan Slater. <laughs> Two teams battling it out. Tooth and nail today on the rubber game of the series. Back to tell you about the new Gator reliever right after this. So a brand new game at 7-7 here in the eighth inning. Gators playing in their 32nd game of the year. And this is the 19th appearance of the year for Blake Purnell. Yeah, and a third in this series through a three and a third innings last night. Closed it out after Brandon Sproat went five and two-thirds. Also through an inning on Thursday night's ball game. You see the numbers sparkling. Strike thrower gets ground balls. That's the key. That's what he did last night. Fastball not overpowering, but he's very deceptive and gets a lot of run and movement on his fastball and a good slider to go with it. I mean, he was 87-89 last night, but out of that deception, the hitters just couldn't catch up to it. Now, he has 90-plus in there, but the whole key for him is deception and movement. So leadoff hitter Caden Wallace now with a one-for-four afternoon. Purnell had made 57 pitches in his first two games in the series. 13 Thursday. And uh, 44 last night. Last night going three and a third innings. Looking ahead to the last of the eighth inning, the Gators will have the bottom of the batting order. Rivera, Gassetti, and Derek Fabian are due up. This is a big out to get. Momentum has changed with the home run. Top of the order up. Big pitch upcoming. The 2 2 pitch from Purnell. Foul down the right side. Look out on the berm. Somebody got a deflection. Deflected off the glove of Purnell to Halter on a 1 4 3 put out for out number two. A big out to get, and he got it. 
Not done yet, though. So two away, and here's center fielder Braden Webb. Webb is 0 for 3, but he walked in the sixth inning. Graduate from McKinney, Texas, with a big swing and a miss. He played at Grayson, Texas Community College. 2018 had 66 RBI. And the next year hit 450. 14 home runs. Juco All-American season in 2019. And defensively, Dave Van Horn thinks of him as one of the best outfielders he's ever had. So Purnell will strike away from putting the Hogs down here in the eighth inning. But Zach Gregory's home run has tied the game here in this inning at 7-7. Arkansas has rallied twice for multiple runs down today. And Webb strikes out for the second time, ending the inning. Oh, check, check that. He got a piece of it. And just a piece of it. So still one and two on Webb. And again, fouling it off. Let's see if they go to slider here. Been pounding them a lot of two-seam fastballs. Look out, boy, that dugout right over that area. They were scattering. They got a like somebody got got nipped. But he's been pounding them inside. Now they're setting them away. There was your slider. The 2-2 delivery. Grounded down to third. Derek Fabian throws them out. And now the inning is over. But a big home run off the bat of Zach Gregory. He throws strike one. Rivera one for three. Two for nine on the weekend. 280 hitter for the season. Showing bunt, got a high pitch, laid it down, and the throw is errant, and here's Rivera going for an extra base. That's a bunt single and a throwing error. And there's the go-ahead run in scoring position. And that's how you attack someone who's beating you up with an off-speed pitch. Lay one down. The almighty bunt rears its ugly head, right? So it's a pitch that's up. But what I love is he kept, yeah, how many times I talk about keeping the bat angle? Gazzetti still shortening up. He's angry with himself after bunting foul that breaking ball. One and two. The game on the line here in the last half of the eighth inning. In a 7-7 tie with the go-ahead run, Rivera at second base, and nobody out. Well, the next best thing right here is 
hit the ball right side if you're not going to bunt. Oh, a beautiful bunt. How about that? Great bunt by Gassetti. He'll get a glad hand all around that dugout. A two-strike breaking ball. And he got a beautiful bunt down. The almighty bunt works again. And it's beautiful. He gets it. Angle bat's good. Gets it on the barrel. Doesn't angle his bat towards third. He didn't need to. And that's the potential lead run right there at third base. And now you got to bring the infield in. So two shots added here. Well, if Derek Fabian can put it in play, he's got a great odds in his favor here with the draw in infield and one out. And he takes a monstrous cut. All you got to do is get some contact here. Safety squeeze is something that is not out of the realm of possibility here. Derek has three sacrifices on the season. I think Sully's talking to him about that, that approach. I mean, Looked like he bailed, pulled his head out on a breaking ball, trying to hit it a country mile and just puts it in play. The Gators have a great chance to score the run. And I'll say this, too. Conversation down there at third base. Craig Bell is going to be talking to his runner there. Josh Rivera and said, anticipate the ball in the dirt. He throws a lot of curveballs. Look for one to skip away, and we'll take a shot at it. 0-1 the count. Takes one right down the chute, 0 and 2. Now you got to be looking curveball here. That's his best pitch. There it is, a drive into center field. Going to be caught, a late jump by Rivera. The throw to the plate, he's safe. And the Gators take the lead. Well, Derek Fabian was sitting on the breaking ball and he got it. Pulls his hands in, little inside out action. I tell you, Webb did a great job making this close. It shouldn't have been. Rivera, <laughs> ball, in the, ball in the air, and he tagged up late. Yeah, he had a late break. I, I'm not sure why he was 25 that, feet down the line. That Yeah, he, he made a mistake right out of the get-go. Ball hit in the air. you got to go back to the bag. And there's a ball hit down the line. That'll be rattling around into the corner. Halter headed for second with a walk-in double. I tell you, if I was Arkansas, I might have challenged Rivera tagging up that quick. Just why not, right? Pulls his hands in. Second Gator hitter that has done that on the breaking ball. Well, the spin rate might be 3,100, but the Gators equal to the challenge. That'll be it for Brady Tiger. Z walks off the field. And a new Arkansas pitcher coming in. Back with more right after this. The Gators have pushed across the go-ahead run in the game. Have a runner at second base, two away as the Razorbacks make a pitching change. And coming in to work now, six foot five, 240 pound Zebulon Vermillion. He had his 12th appearance all in relief. Actually pitched in the opener game that Arkansas won. Went two innings in that game. Did give up an earned run, but you can see seven walks, 20 strikeouts. A guy that has a fastball that can go up to 96 miles an hour. 
And his job right here is to keep Kobe Halter from scoring. Halter with the big two out double. So Judd Fabian will hit. He's been walked twice. He has singled and he scored in the fifth inning. An 8-7 Florida lead. Fabian hitting in the two spot. First pitch smashed past Wallace in the left field. Here comes Halter. He'll score. That was a Fabian rocket shot off Wallace. And it's now 9-7. Well, he got around quickly on that one. Boy, he smokes this. This ball absolutely addresses Wallace down there at third base. Alter scoring easily and a big, big insurance run right there. Gators now with 13 base hits. And here comes Sterling Thompson, who's got two of them today. One more shot to launch one in that wind stream. Gators have Nick Pogue starting to loosen in the bullpen out there in right field. Now a two-run Gators lead. Florida with nine runs, 13 hits, and an error. Arkansas seven runs, eight hits, and an error. Fly ball out to center field. Braden Webb there to make the catch. Healing is over, but the Gators get two big runs with two hits. There was an error. And now we come to the ninth inning with the Gators leading 9-7. to seven. Top of the ninth inning. The Gators with a 9-7 to seven lead. But the Razorbacks. Five scheduled up. Robert Moore leads it off against Blake Prinnell. Moore has struck out twice looking today. He has walked and he has singled and scored. 250 hitter and strike two in there. It's almost like they're taking two strikes. Uh. He went chasing that one. Three strikeouts today by Moore. Five in the series. And for the eighth time in nine innings, the Gators retired a leadoff. Man, watch the run on this two-seamer. That's huge. Going to get a pinch hitter coming up for Lanzelli. Kendall Diggs, 222 hitter. Hasn't played in the series. Went two for five with a double in the midweek game against Central Arkansas. Six hits in 27 at-bats. Freshman from Olathe, Kansas. And to take down such a uh, experienced hitter for Diggs right here, possibly the only thing I could think of is because of the sidearm offerings of Purnell, they get the left-handed hitter. I've got a better look at it. That's a chopper, which is foul. So now two and two. 
Diggs was ranked as the number two high school prospect in Kansas last year. Six feet tall, 205 pounder. Blake Brunell can pick up the victory. He can retire the Hogs here this inning. Fouled it off. This is Diggs' only seventh plate appearance in SEC games. That was a good job there by Diggs to foul that last pitch off. Two and two. He didn't bite on that pitch. That's a great take. Good location, obviously out of the zone, but enticing. Got Robert Moore to chase that pitch. Nice pick there by Callalau and on to Purnell for the second out. And that had to be efficient because that's a fast runner going down the line from the left side. A lot of things can go wrong when you have to hurry a throw, and Kalilau, who scuffled earlier in this ball game, has made like four fine plays since then. So the Hogs are down to their final out. As Michael Turner. Trying to come back and take the series and snap Arkansas's 13 game streak, 13 series streak of SEC wins. Yeah, that's an incredible streak that Dave Van Horn has had his team play. And now one and two. A uh, series like this can turn your entire season around. Gators one pitch away. Crowd comes to its feet. A ball and two strikes. Michael Turner fouled it back. Well, you want to get Turner here. You got the power hitting Slavens on deck. Wind still blowing out the right field, and he's a left-handed hitter. You want to get this guy right here, right now. One and two. Blake Purnell, ready to work. Fly ball hit the shadow left. Langford coming in, and the ball game is over. And the Florida Gators have done it the hard way, coming through the back door. Getting two runs in the bottom of the eighth inning and beat the Arkansas.